Hi everyone, it's Nadine Bardo with the County of Annapolis. We're here for our annual community information session. Yes, it definitely looks a bit different this year, but as 2020 goes, it's quite normal. We are doing this virtual style, but the information will be very much the same as it has been and always as helpful as it always is. We will have Nancy Chisholm talking about our municipal grants, Deb Ryan touching on our federal grants, and we have our special provincial guest, Meg Cumming, talking on all the opportunities we have provincially. And I have some little tidbits I'm gonna stick in there too. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy the show. Hi everyone, Nancy Chisholm here with the uh, County of Annapolis Community Grant Program. As Nadine said, we're coming to you virtually this year. Uh, looking a little different, but we're still going to give you some great information for you to be able to apply for funding to help all of your community organizations and groups. So in the County of Annapolis, we have a couple different grant programs that Council likes to give back to the communities every year. It's a nice little picture so of the uh, recipients pre-COVID times uh, receiving their uh, grant funding. Always great to give back to the community. So as I said, Municipal Council has two grant programs. We have the Community Grant Policy, and we also have one for Harbor Authority Society's Capital Assistance Policy slash program. One is specifically for helping with the wharves in Annapolis County. We'll put a little bit more emphasis on the community grants for you, and uh, there's different categories within the policy, and that will depend on what type of project you're looking to get funding for. So the community grants policy is every year council will put aside 1.6% of their expected tax revenues for that fiscal year and we'll set that aside for this policy. The policy is designed for not-for-profit organizations, charitable organizations, and registered Canadian charities and those are the eligible groups that can apply. At any time you guys have any questions, my contact information will be uh, available at the end or beginning of this presentation and uh, we can help you out with the categories. So let's review them. So the categories are the Community Programs Assistance Fund. Uh, we have one for Marketing Promotion Partnerships. There's one for Community Heritages and uh, Lighthouses and Museums. Community Halls and Centers Assistance Program. The Trails Assistance Program. And there is a Capital Projects Assistance Program. And that has two categories, one for small projects, one for larger ones. And we also have a uh, new addition to our policy uh, called the Organizational Restructuring and Planning Grants. So let's go over each one briefly. So the Community Programs Assistance Fund is to provide uh, funds for not-for-profit community organizations to initiate or develop programs which support the delivery of municipal services or provide services to enhance community well-being and the quality of life. So these grants are normally in the $500 to $1,000 range uh, to a maximum of $2,000. The grant will cover 50% of the cost of your program up to the $2,000. So some examples that uh, Council has supported in the past would be um, seniors exercise fitness programs, uh, breakfast programs to support schools, um, anything in that a uh, type of supporting your community and enhancing well-being in a program format, we can help you out with this uh, category. Marketing Promotion and Partnership Program is our next category. And this category, you can apply for up to $5,000 to support, uh, promote uh, business, industrial, and tourism opportunities in the county and mm -hmm. initiatives uh, will be prioritized with making sure they're keeping with the strategic goals of the municipality. Um, they provide a substantial regional benefit and um, also to provoke, promote meaningful linkages within the community. Some examples of uh, previous funded applications through this program would be to support the uh, uh, CARP's annual river festival, to uh, promote the river We've also helped support uh, the Port George Jamborees. Um, so those are more of a larger regional benefit to the community and a marketing aspect, brings in tourism and uh, really, 
really great to have those. Hopefully we can get there someday again. The next category is our Community Halls and Centers Assistance Program. This, this one in particular is to support our Community Halls and Centers in Annapolis County, which we have many of them. And this funding is for capital projects and repairs. Some examples where community halls have received grant funding through this program would be to uh, replace an oil tank, upgrade uh, the heating efficiencies, uh, for example, installing a heat pump perhaps, um, helping with a roofing project or window replacements. It could also be used to update fixtures within the building itself. So uh, kitchen upgrades, uh, furniture, appliances, that sort of thing. Um, if you're community hall, you can apply for up to $1,200. If your community center is over 2,000 square feet, you may be eligible to receive twice that amount and apply for up to $2,400. The next category is the Capital Projects Assistance Program. And again, this is broken down into two categories. We'll start off with the small matching, small project matching grant category. Um, these applications should include initiatives that demonstrate significant benefit to the region or a high degree of creativity, innovation, unique appeal or benefit as determined by council. The awards are one-time grants and shall not normally exceed $5,000. This particular category will require proof of matching funds. So for example, if your organization is asking for $2,000 from Municipal Council, then you'll have to show that you are uh, coming up with $2,000 from your organization, whether that be from another grant source, it could be from funds from the organization, and it also could include some in-kind uh, contributions, donations, or labor as well. And uh, we'll be happy to work with you to develop those types of applications. The next category is the large capital pledge grant. So this is one of the, uh, the, the larger uh, categories that you have to apply for. Uh, applications for this category shall only be considered for capital projects for facilities and programs and or services the municipality would or might otherwise provide. The, some examples um, for uh, this category that we've seen in the past that Council has supported would be to support work for arenas, um, pools, uh, the local exhibition, for infrastructure and help maintaining those facilities. You can apply for up to $25,000 for this particular category. The next category is the Trails Assistance Program. Pretty self-explanatory. This particular category is designed to help uh, trails uh, societies and associations maintain and develop trails within Annapolis County, of which we have many and they're super popular and beautiful. So this program provides funding to establish trail organizations to develop and operate public trails to serve the needs of all residents within Annapolis County. You can apply for up to $5,000 with this particular category. The next category is our Community Heritage Grants for Lighthouses and Museums. Again, the title speaks for itself. This category is designed to help uh, museums and lighthouses uh, with preserving, protecting, rehabilitating lighthouses in the county, uh, promote or protect the heritage and the culture of the county, and also to help leverage uh, more senior government funding for cultural initiatives. So if you're applying for, say, a provincial or a federal grant, um, they often like to see the municipal support and this particular category can help you leverage that type of funding. Maximum grants shall not normally exceed $500 for this category. Our newest category is the Organizational Restructuring and Planning Grants category. This is a larger category as well. Requests for funding shall only be considered for organizational restructuring and planning for not-profit organizations who are structured through a board of directors, employ staff, and utilize volunteers. Awards are one-time organizational restructuring and planning grants and shall not normally exceed $20,000. 
These grants are considered a contribution to the organizational restructuring and planning to help build capacity and create efficiencies within the internal structures of the organization. And this one also may be funded from a, a reserve fund. Now the categories within this, because it is a bit of a broad statement, there's a, a bit of a graphic here. Um, and those are types, the different types of categories that you might be working on within your larger organization that you could apply for this funding under. Okay, so before we move on, that wraps up the community grant program itself. Again, um, happy to assist anyone in the process. If you have any questions or concerns, please give me a call, an email, and uh, we'll help you work through the process. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the Harbor Authorities and Society's Capital Assistance Program. So this is a separate policy which uh, Council uses to support our harbors, wharfs, and public landings in Annapolis County. This program is available to Margaretsville, Port Lorne, Cottage Cove, Hampton, Parker's Cove, Delaps Cove, and Victoria Beach. So the program is intended to address two needs of these incorporated societies or, or uh, uh, authorities, harbor authorities, um, primarily for seed money to leverage federal and provincial grants for larger capital projects um, to help maintain the wharves, and also assistance for smaller projects that address um, more ongoing capital maintenance requirements. There are uh, uh, details to the program, basically the um, each grant for the large project capital investment grants uh, shall not normally exceed the lesser of 10% of the total cost of the capital project or $10,000. Um, the small project matching grant, so every year each society will be eligible to receive up to $2,500. However, if there is a, uh, a change was made in the policy a couple years ago, if there is a need for more than that um, it is quite an expense to maintain them so you are eligible to apply for multi-year allocations equivalent to the 2500 per year up to a maximum of ten thousand dollars so if anyone is uh interested uh in the this particular um grant funding policy then certainly again give me a call and we can go over the details and discuss which category would be best for you oh what do I do now if I want to apply for a grant? During Under these two policies, you can give me a call, an email, um, look me up. Uh, again, my name is Nancy Chisholm. I work uh, as a Recreation and Programs Officer for the County of Annapolis. My phone number and my email are there. And you can also go to our website at annapoliscounty.ca. You can look under the Community Development tab located at the top of the page and then just click on Grants to Organizations and you'll be able to find out all that information. Thank you very much, and thank you for supporting our communities. Hi everybody, I'm back. I am gonna kind of be like a commercial between some of the funding presentations you're gonna see here tonight, just to talk about some non-funding issues, but things that are equally as important. So we're gonna start off with one that is dear to my heart, and that is our volunteer. This year has been tough, and probably one of the saving graces of getting through it has been our volunteers. We are going to be approaching 2021 with a positive attitude and in the hopes that everything will go kind of back to normal, at least to the new normal. So as part of that, we are asking you to nominate a volunteer for our 2021 Volunteer Week celebrations. Next year, the celebration is going to be taking place between April 18th and 24th, but we're actually accepting nominations now. Again, we have gone through a tremendously difficult year and getting through it was part of our volunteers work and they really did step forward and help a lot of people that needed helping. So again, Volunteer Week is gonna be April 18th to 24th, 2021. We are now accepting nominations. Just go to our website, annapoliscounty.ca. The deadline is February 12th, 2021. So you have tons of time to get this nomination in. But just to lighten the mood a bit and to bring a little bit of merriment and to show you how important our volunteers are, we are gonna have a fun little video to show you.
What's the trouble, Sonny? Your gal turn you down? Uh-uh. Yeah. Hmm. Collecting for charity, eh? I suppose they're kind of slow in kicking in, eh? And how? You don't have to tell me the good them charities do. I know. They helped out plenty when times was tough for me. Champion? Now, look. I ain't got much, but if everybody would give a little, it, it'd help a lot, see? So here. <laughs> I'll start the ball a-rollin'. Dash! 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 Hi there everyone, my name is Meg Cumming and I'm the regional manager for the Annapolis Valley. And I'm sorry that I'm not able to see you all in person this year. Um, one of my highlights of uh, the fall is always coming to uh, the Grants Forum with Annapolis County to see all the amazing community volunteers who are out uh, doing wonderful things for their communities and uh, interested in learning more about the grants that are offered both at the municipal level, the provincial level, and even at the federal level. So I did want to give a bit of an overview of some of the grants that are available through the provincial government to community organizations. So one of the main criteria is that organizations do have to be registered with the joint stocks, registry of joint stocks, as a society. So they do have to be a nonprofit organization. And we have a number of different grants that I'm going to just talk about in a couple of different buckets. So we do have some grants for facilities and for capital upgrades. We have a recreation facility development grant, which is to assist community groups and municipalities and not for profits um, in building infrastructure that supports um, physical activity, sport and recreation. So things like playgrounds and ball fields and rinks and those kinds of things. Um, that grant is uh, it is open right now, and it, it closes on February four February first, twenty twenty one, and uh, we fund if you're eligible, we fund uh, up to one third of the project costs um, to a maximum of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We also have a smaller community recreation capital grant, which is for projects that are under $20,000 total, and they would also be for capital or infrastructure. So um, we would fund a maximum, one third to a maximum of $5,000 for those. We have community facility improvement program, which is for community halls and other community infrastructure that supports um, community activities and culture and heritage in the community. Um, uh, less so on the recreation side, but we recognize that with community halls, sometimes, um, everything happens at the hall so recreation and culture and you know every community gatherings and those kinds of things um, that uh, is due uh, February 28th 2021 and they uh, will fund up to 75% of a project to a maximum of $50,000 we also have the community accessibility program which will fund up to $10,000 um, to increase the accessibility in your community facilities so in a community hall maybe an accessible bathroom or a ramp or um, an installation of an automatic door uh, things like that and we also have a planning assistance program that will um, 
provide a little bit of funding to support the design or the planning of some of these infrastructure projects. We also have some program and equipment funding. Um, so we have the Recreation Community Development Grant, which is um, supporting initiatives that support the shared strategy for recreation. So active living, inclusion, connecting people with nature, um, and other kinds of things like that. Um, that one's probably the most wide open grant that we have. And I'm gonna say this at the end, but I would encourage you, if you have any questions about the grants, to get in touch with us. Um, because if we don't know, if we don't have a program that can help you, we might know of another program that can, and we also want to make sure that we direct you to the right program for the project that you're interested in doing. Um, we also have a sport fund that's to increase for community sport organizations. Um, and then we have a number of different trails grants. So we have a recreation trail expansion grant, which is for um, the development of trail, so surfacing, um, construction, things like that. We have um, a trail maintenance program for organization, trail organizations that um, are responsible for um, trail on the rails to trails across the province. And we also have a trails engineering assistance program. So those are, I don't want to spend too long because I know it's a video, but that's a brief overview of our grant programs. And I, I want to just encourage you, if you have a project in mind, if you're interested in doing something and you're looking for grant funding, the best advice I could give is to call our office. I'll make sure that Nadine has our contact information um, and one of our staff can help navigate where to go and what to, um, what to do and certainly also help you if necessary with getting your budget together, making sure you have all the documents you need and making sure that your story really comes across in the grant application. So um, thank you all for your interests and uh, thank you for all that you do within your communities and we look forward to hearing from some of you in the future. Okay, this is commercial break number two. This will be quick, I promise. So you really haven't got time to run out and get something to eat. You really have to listen to me for just for a second. So I am approaching 2021 as a normal year. The festivals are gonna happen. The events are gonna happen because right now we're gonna stay home and nip this thing in the butt. So let's just jump forward to 2021. We are gonna to try to get all the events in for our 2021 community events guide. You know, this is one of our popular publications that we put out every year, and it's one of our favorite. So I'm asking you to put on that positive hat and send me your event submissions for 2021. Just go to annapolis.ca and send them to me, and I will make sure they get in that publication because it's gonna happen, I promise. Hello everyone, I'm Deborah Ryan, I'm the Recreation Manager, and uh, you've heard from other people today. Uh, and uh, I'm going to cover off some very important pieces uh, for grants in general. Uh, recreation has been a very important part of uh, working with communities and reaching out to communities, and there's been so much resiliency out there in terms of people applying for grants and making good projects happen. And you do that through one method, and uh, many methods, but one of them is, is grants. And uh, we will help you source out funding opportunities in Annapolis County, and there are, as Nancy Chisholm mentioned, the municipal sector, there is the provincial with Meg Cumming, who gave an overview, and then I'm gonna cover the federal ones that I know of. Now, there's many, many grants out there. And also, I'm going to highlight a very important piece that volunteers need to know, and that is grant writing. So, it's art, almost an art in itself, but, um, Nevertheless, I think there's some key points that we want to do it. And um, I have a fun slide here because I think that you folks are community superheroes many times when you're doing a project. Because just when you think that you have an idea and a vision, you end up having to write a grant as well. And uh, so um, I just made it uh, fun in terms of uh, Spider-Man up there, in terms of uh, when everyone else is watching the Super Bowl or other events, uh, you're, you're writing a grant proposal. So, 
But one of the things uh, I mentioned is grants, uh, is really does take research. So uh, find somebody on your committee that loves that stuff, because not everyone does, but others do like to sit down and create a masterpiece. So we would like you to talk to us in the recreation world about your projects and your community intentions. New grants pop up from time to time, so if we know what you're doing in a community, we can actually redirect that opportunity to you. Uh, we can assist, uh, but we need to know your details and we do need a little bit of lead time. Uh, there's a lot of funding applications, as Meg Cumming had mentioned earlier, like February 1st is a deadline for a very popular program called the Provincial Recreation Facility Development Program. And that program is good for organizations and you can get up to one third of the total cost. But we need lead time to help you. So plan now if you're thinking of a project for the February 1st deadline. There's a lot of things to do uh, before you make the application. The other one is if uh, some organizations uh, do apply for three or four different grants at a time. Uh, we call that stacking. Uh, it is allowed. Um, it is it is artful. <laughs> it, it's an art in itself. Uh, and those are the types of things that sometimes Nancy and I work and tag team to uh, to actually make sure the community has the right pieces together in terms of applying and the timing is correct. So some of the keys to your success uh, is planning your project. Uh, what do you need or want? Uh, often we ask you to do a three-year multi-day uh, multi-year plan that's mostly so everyone in your organization knows uh, the year one year two and year three and it allows funding agencies to know uh, that there's a ne next piece coming the next year so again you have to research your available grants that are applicable you consult early once again with the recreation folks uh, or your regional rep which is made coming here in the valley. So keys to success um, are things like um, read the guidelines carefully. <laughs> Pick somebody that knows uh, about grant writing. Uh, start early and prepare for those dead deadlines and get your quotes in advance. Uh, and letters, are su uh, letters of support are needed in most grant applications, not all. So some of the projects that, depending on what you do in the community, uh, this is a federal program. Uh, the County of Annapolis applies for the Canada Day funding for the Bridgetown area, and so does other towns. But you are also eligible to apply for any of these that are listed, the National Indigenous Peoples Day, June 21st, Najon Baptiste, which is really a Quebec celebration, but also Multiculturalism Day too. So um, you can go to Heritage Canada and you can find out not only about these programs, but believe me, there are so many more. They may be closed right now, but you plan for 2022 as well. So the other program that this county has taken advantage of with the community organizations, and many of you will know this one quite well, uh, uh, many organizations in Annapolis County have applied once or twice to this, but not in successive years. It's called the Federal New Horizons Funding Program and it's funding for senior related projects. And uh, you can get up to $25,000 for funding for capital or community project, uh, and there's one per group. The deadline normally, in any given year, is, uh, um, is June. This year, because of COVID, there's a lot of changes. So therefore, they allowed funding applications that were extended to October. Um, so, and you usually get funding announcements in December or February. So this one is that you have to plan well. Um, planning is required, you need to be prepared. The application is online and it's not an easy application to fill out. The next one is uh, uh, other projects, is federal funding links um, to culture, history, and sport. Um, they're too numerous to mention. Uh, there are not 39 categories, which just shows you that we there's no way we will, we would know. So sometimes you get somebody to explore those uh, for you. Uh, and if you're the type of organization that's looking for summer student employment opportunities, there's a link here for uh, hiring, uh, putting applications in to hire appropriate staff. The other one is Enabling Accessibility Fund. Um, this is one that is federal. Uh, you can get up to 
to community nonprofit it is closed now. Uh, we encourage everyone to go in and look at the type of grants that have already been received in the past. Gives you an idea what might be available to your community in this regard. So uh, it started in 2016 approximately and it was supposed to be for 10 year funding. So there is the opportunities. So I'm going to touch base in a minute on that. But uh, another funding program federally is what we call is um, the um, Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency and they exist uh, here in our region which is in the, the uh, Digby County area and it's tourism and economic focused and Brianne Lombard is the contact for that person. So for example in Annapolis County Margaretsville has taken advantage of this funding program when they've done some initiatives in their community. So sometimes if you've got a program that you feel that has tourism and an economic focus it's not that we're the experts in that area but we do have work with community groups uh, that have shaped their applications well. Uh, so give us a call on that or you can also contact Brianne Lombard if you have a project. Yes, and the next piece of uh, funding that you'd be interested in is around accessibility. And uh, there are provincial uh, opportunities that Meg have already mentioned uh, with Nova Scotia Community Culture and Heritage. Accessibility fund is a fund that can provide up to a little over 66% of funding uh, for various projects and uh, you really need to go online and look at what is available for that one but it is a really good program. Uh, the federal program it's called the Enabling Accessibility Fund. Don't know a lot about this one because we haven't taken advantage of it but it's grants to communities, businesses, and governments for ramps, doorways, washrooms, installing screen readers, and hearing loop systems. And so all the things that you really do need uh, for uh, making your area more accessible. Uh, another program is what we call the Youth Innovation Component. It's another federal program. Uh, it is an organizational partnership with youth. So if there's a youth in a community that identifies a project, um, it may mean simply uh, they need to have a new doorway uh, so that people in uh, wheelchairs can get into the facility, uh, whether it be historic gardens or whether it be another public facility. They can work with that organization and get up to $10,000 uh, for to break down that barrier. Um, so uh, it can be for automatic door openers, building raised garden beds, um, in community gardens, buying specialized wheelchairs to go on sandy beaches, um, and the funding uh, has closed for this season, but you can plan for uh, uh, next year for sure. Um, uh, some other funding opportunities is the uh, uh, Agra Spirit Funding Award. It's enhancing rural opportunities. Usually it's open between March 1st and the 29th. Uh, and uh, projects must be completed within a two years. Uh, this one uh, usually involves equipment and building funds. Not a lot of organizations from, uh, from what I know have, have been successful in Annapolis County, but I do know Mountain Lee Lodge, when they built their gazebo, they did get some funding from that program. So you can get up to $5,000 to $25,000, so it's worth it to give it a try. Um, another one is locally, uh, it's the Nova Scotia Community Health Boards and these are wellness funds and they're available in June of 2021. Uh, you do have to check online to, uh, to find out the, those, those uh, deadlines uh, for the, that program. Uh, it is improving the health of your community. Uh, there's usually grants between 250 to 3,000 on average, but uh, go, on, go online and, and check that one out. The other one is uh, provincial. Uh, it's an age-friendly communities, and uh, funding is still open till February 1st, 2021. It might be one that you might want to go and ask. Uh, funding to smaller scale communities up to $10,000. However, smaller grants are usually the norm for that one. And there's two parts to it. Uh, you know, there needs to be community planning required and partnership with local government. So you have to start early if you want to do that one. Uh, when we talk funding and opportunities, depending on what kind of organization or nonprofit that you have, uh, sometimes the private sector has opportunities, whether it be the Royal Bank, Scotia Bank, uh, Nova Scotia Power, TELUS, uh, 
Irving or King's Mutual. For example, in the Valley, King's Mutual funded uh, the Apple Dome in Berwick up to over a million dollars. So uh, if you're creative and you have a project, you know, small amounts of grants, there is some opportunity there. Uh, and they may align with your priorities. So, so the big thing is research your organization's applicability to their criteria, whether it is the arts, music, environment, recreation, sport, and what have you. Another form of funding, which is not a grant, uh, is crowdsourcing. We're seeing, we're seeing this more and more uh, in, because we have uh, social media platforms and it's online campaigns that can assist in fundraising uh, for a specific community need. It could be a fundraising effort for a new roof or assist with a family hardship in a community and many of you have probably seen those and been very successful. You do have to research those because not all platforms uh, are equal. Some will give you a hundred percent return and others will take a portion of that. So, so again, a little more research. And ask somebody else. Somebody's already been through this, so you always ask your, your community neighbors. So that sort of gives you an overview and summary of uh, uh, my portion of the presentation today. Um, and if you want more information on our municipal grants, Nancy Chisholm, uh, who you met earlier, uh, is the go-to person for our county grants, Meg Cummings, certainly for the provincial. And if there's any other ideas or suggestions that you have in regards to uh, federal opportunities uh, or even uh, looking at what your possibilities in your community, I know Nancy and I tag team a lot in terms of doing uh, what we call recreation community development. We've been doing it for over 30 years, so we, we like it. and. Uh, We've seen a lot of opportunities out there in our community that are pretty special. So Naples County is a great place to live and work, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. So there it is, our 2020 community information session, virtual. We did it, and I would like to spend, send a special thank you to Nancy Chisholm, Deb Ryan, and Meg Cummings, and a super special thank you to Larry Powell, who recorded this for us. It was wonderful. I wish we could have been there in person. We miss you guys. But for now, this is gonna have to do. Remember, call us anytime if you have any questions. Have a great day.